All right. Hi guys. I'm out in the greenhouse today. It's close to sunset and I figured I would show you what's going on in here. Um, I promised a tour, but I didn't want to do it until it was finished, like completely finished, but that's not going to happen, at least not right this second. So I figured I'll show you what I've got going on. Uh, let me know if you can hear me or if you can't hear me. I'll have to wait till some people come on and they can let me know if they can hear me because I tried it at first and I got a uh, message that said that they couldn't hear me so I'm gonna try again and see what happens so um, just a little backstory this is an Anna white greenhouse we had a hoop house here that was 10 by 20 um, and in November of last year it blew away um, two years ago two years ago because with COVID the years get mixed up so two years ago in November it blew away upside down it looked like a little roly-poly and then in the December following uh, the month after um, there was a warm weekend and we put together the pieces in the garage and brought them out to here and put them together and so last winter that's right because last winter I didn't bother trying anything I didn't grow anything I didn't necessarily want to waste the heat I didn't want to try it but this winter I said I'm gonna do it so with that said, let me flip it around and show you. So here is the inside of the greenhouse. I'm hoping someone's going to show up so they can tell me whether they can hear me or not. But at any rate, the walls are just point made of um, two by fours. Put to, we we uh, saw you know cut them and then put them together and assembled them out here together. The walls on top are corrugated plastic and they're running horizontal because we could fit more strips this way than we could this way. Because in between each, um, in between each of these beams is about 24 inches and the strips um, if we ran them vertically, they're about maybe two foot and a quarter, two foot and a third. So we wanted to run them horizontally. The bad part about horizontally is that they do trap the snow when it happens. The good part about horizontally is they do trap the snow and provide some insulation sometimes and still let some light in. And so um, this year, Hub Hubby put these um, PVC pipes along the sides which are nice for my hanging plants. Be careful where they are so I don't bump my head. And then what I've done this year is I ran a wire like at this corner part all the way across to try to keep the plastic in that one section to keep it up there. And then what I have to do still, and I'm afraid of heights, so I haven't done it yet, but I have to attach each bubble wrap to the top and provide and that provides some more insulation so I have some of them done like in the very back I have them done but I do have to get up on a ladder and it makes me really nervous so um, I just haven't done that yet and but I did decide that duct tape was gonna work the best small strips of duct tape because it doesn't seem to release them which I'm glad for uh, we did put in an exhaust fan he put in an exhaust fan I think in the spring of this year that seems to work pretty well and then when it's really warm, we can, I can run the exhaust fan and I can roll up the sides, um, that dark spot here, this is screening. And I installed that um, two years, well, as soon as we built it, I installed that so we can roll up the sides. The wind can still come and go, but the bugs stay out. So I kind of like that. And then I have these um, types of beams I can hang things from as well. And these, these are not necessarily providing structure, but I can hand, hang things. Um, hubby did run electrical, um, so there's a switch that goes right to the fan, which we talked about maybe changing into like a, um, oh, like a temperature set kind of switch so that the fan will only go on if it's a certain temperature in the greenhouse. And then he did run PVC, uh, PVC, he run conduit to actually give me some light switches, some actual electric switches, um, 
that are G, I always forget, GFCI, GCFI, whatever, like that. And so they will pop if there is an issue, if there is a breaker issue, then they will pop. I don't have to come out here and just reset it, just like you would for a bathroom. Um, this is a giant mess, but basically this green box here goes for this sensor wire here. And this sensor wire here is kind of reading what temperature is around around the cooler vegetables. So cooler vegetables, we got carrots and carrots. We got climbing peas and some bush peas and some spinach and radishes. And then I have some containers of strawberries. And inside of those, I also put some more spinach. So we'll have spinach through the winter, fresh spinach. But because they're cool crops, I'm not that concerned about them. Uh, I have one left over to put my um, escarole and romaine babies to put some of those in there. And then this I potted up. It's uh, calendula. Potted up from the ground and then I cut it back because it seemed to do pretty well in the cold or the warm. It was just very happy no matter what. So this sensor whoops, is kind of telling me what it's, what's going on in this area now i can't i looked at the temperature gauge remotely last um this morning early this morning and it said like 23 degrees or something ridiculous so i was like no but we had a really 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 windy day yesterday and apparently this sensor wire which is not real secure the sensor wire had fallen down to the ground so of course it was going to read really 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 low and then the importance of the temperature sensor is I set it for um, 50 so that when it reaches about 50, the heater will turn on. And um, yeah, so when it reaches 50, then it gives a signal to the heater that's on to turn on. And then when the temperature is near 50 again by the sensor, then it will turn off. And especially like in the sunny days, um, the heater will turn off, but if the sensor's on the ground, it's just going to keep running. So that's what's going on there. Um, the potted plants are still doing well, a little bit dry. Um, and because I don't have, I don't have those all secured yet. What I just do at night, I just, I need to just go secure them. So it's less labor. That's all what I'm about. I'm all about the lazy gardener, less manual labor. So I just put them over the top so the cold air isn't blowing right on them every night. Got some more over here. Ooh, they're really dry. It gets really dry in the cold. This one's not as dry, but I do the same thing with these. I just kind of put them together. They're the friends. And I put them together. And then I have frost cloth over here. And I'm going to wrap that over these like that. And then over here, same thing. Pot of plants. This one's... Oh! Just poke me in the eye with the dead part. That one's dead. These are still hanging on. A little bit of parsley's getting green. But again, I just put them together for the thermal mass. They're friends. And they just kind of hang out. And that way, again, they don't have the cold temperatures just falling down on them in the nighttime. And with these as well, these are all just um, English or Swedish ivy that smells delicious. It smells like juicy fruit gum, which actually makes me think about um, apparently moles because I'm having a mole problem in my other garden. Moles like juicy fruit gum. I wonder if I could stick some of this stuff down in the hole if they would eat it and move on. I don't know. Anyway, I also put um, jugs of water near the plants. So when the temperatures in the greenhouse heat up, the water will heat up and then it will cool off slowly, giving a little bit of radiant heat for mass effect also. And then I also just put this on. I mean, I know, well, I, I was gonna say it doesn't frost in the greenhouse, but actually I came in the other day and it had there was frost on top of the frost cloth. And that could be because I have um, big, big trash cans full of water. I have three round ones or three square ones full of water. 
And then one round one that's full of water. And again, it's for the mass effect. And, it, and my hope is that the heat from the sun would shine up down in here and heat them up. Um, I was thinking about back here, there's bags. I was going to fill those with water, but they just turn into big blobs. Like I have one here and it was just a big blob and, um, probably frozen by now, but, oh no, it's just leaked out. Must've got a hole. So I had to hold it up with a string. So that did not work. That was a not, that did not work. Fail. That was a fail. So you have to have some kind of structure. I probably could have used some of the five gallon buckets and put the bags in there. And I double bagged with um, contractor bags. So each one of these has a double bag in it. So that being said, what happens is uh, the moisture can come out of the, <clears throat> the trash cans because they don't have lids. And it was getting on top of the frost cloth over here. And the reason they don't have lids <sighs> is because I went to Walmart. Oh, I mean a big box store. I went to Walmart and um ordered these actually i ordered these for pickup so the people came and they brought the trash cans and they brought the lids and they put them in my car and i came home and i was all excited and i filled them up and i went to put the lids on and they're the wrong size so they're too small so i can't use those lids for that so i may have to buy some something else to cover them or maybe even put just another trash bag over the top just to kind of keep the the moisture in there maybe i'm not sure yet um the chickens had tried to decimate the cabbage outside so i dug it up probably a week ago and put it in here and i'm going to see if it'll grow back and that would be super cool if it does Let's see if i can see any new leaves not yet maybe uh we did i did go through and insulate i put in board insulation on the metal walls of the greenhouse along the outsides and then this is the new bench that, that I built, that we built. And I'm really excited. It's deeper than the old one. I think this is, this is three foot long. It's deeper. And then I made a tray out of garden fencing down here. And all of my old pots, every time I buy plants, I always see the plot, pots. So they're all down here. So anytime I need them, they're like right there. The other thing I did is when I put this mesh, uh, the hardware cloth on, is I left it unsecured on the front. So I can just lift these up and get to the backs of the, um, the pots if there's some things that I wanted to get there. And so yeah, I've got this water here for Mass Effect. I have potting soil for Mass Effect as well. And again, that means like, they're going to get warm from the heat in the greenhouse and the sunshine. They're going to take a little bit of time to cool off. And in the meantime, they're going to radiate their heat. And, and likewise, in the summer, they say that you have things like this in the greenhouses that um, the greenhouse would take longer because. And then in the very back, I have peppers. These peppers I dug out of the ground. From underneath, eat the, uh, from underneath the tomato trellis, I dug them out of the ground, took off all the fruit, cut them back drastically, and they're supposed to be hibernating in here. I've got, again, I've got some more water over here, a manual thermometer, just so I can take a look. More water there, a little bit of insulation, anything I could do. And then I've got some just bubble wrap draped over the top, again, just to keep the cold air from like getting right on top of them. But look at these things. <laughs> they are growing again. They're growing so well. Here's some flower buds right there. Can you see them? Little white flower buds right here. And there's actually an opening flower here, a new one. And they're, they're giving me peppers. I cut them back really hard, really, really hard. Um, especially this one here. This is one of my um, ancho peppers. It was probably three foot tall and I cut it way, way back. So these were only sticks when I started after I dug them up I t I, and it was hard. And oh, oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Here is a pepperoni, right here, pepperoncini. And here is another one. And in fact, I'm gonna harvest those. One and two. 
I'm going to give the pepper plant back some energy so it doesn't have to keep making that pepper. So they, this, these were not on here, guys. They, these peppers are just uber happy right the second. And I'm going to say knock on wood and count my blessings and things. Um, this one, that's a little pepper. I think it's gotten too cold, though, because it's really soft. I'll give that to the chickens. It's real cold. There it goes. And then there was one more. I thought I saw one more. Oh, here it is right up front. And this one had gotten too cold, too. I accidentally did not cover it on a night that it got too cold. So, there are some peppers that can fall on the ground, of course. Five second rule. But I'm really surprised. This is not what I was expecting. And, um, I mean, I'd rather they just go to sleep. And then I can replant them in the springtime. Which I probably can do anyway. I just, just wasn't sure I wanted to do that yet. But it's an experiment. I'm doing a lot of experiments. Why not? So, light does come through the bubble wrap. Um, and I, I kind of like having there's some spaces here. I kind of like that. It's kind of cold. It's not going to necessarily come down except for like here. If I put some more tape up here, that might help it. Um, but generally, this one little heater... I think it's a 1500 BT. Um, seems to be doing the trick to keep it around 50 degrees. So uh, I do need to put more permanent um, bubble wrap over there as well. And I'll get to that. But I'm, I'm kind of geeked that I can, you know, actually grow things in here. Especially like these plants in, up in here, these vegetables. That's going to be pretty exciting to actually to have them grow. So, anyway, this is the greenhouse. And uh, I need to ah, ah, move my hand. But I need to cover up my uh, these guys here with the frost cloth. Oh, the jalapenos, which I've already collected a couple of jalapenos. It's growing again, too. But here's some more. Here's some more jalapenos. There's one there. And there's one right there. So whatever's going on with this plant, it seems relatively happy. Um, probably will die off. I was, ex see, and that's the thing. I was expecting things not to last through like January because right now is like January weather. Like 20s, 26 for the high. And like feels like 15. That's like January weather. That's not November weather for us. So... I was expecting that these things are going to at least last until, you know, through January and then probably peter off. Um, if there is a power outage, yes, then the temperature stuff will not work. And whatever, whatever's in here and under the bubble wrap uh, or under frost cloth is going to be doing its own thing. So anyway, that's a greenhouse. This is Tammy Lowe, the Lazy Northern Gardener. Saying learn and grow and learn and grow some more and learn and grow some more. Do it. Do it. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.